I go out in the gardens a lot, and I, uh, I like to look at the bugs and everything. And for Mother's Day, you know, just one For Mother's Day, I got a, um, they call it a macro lens. And it brings things, I mean, it takes you into that world. And it's amazing the details that God put into things on purpose. He did it on purpose. He could have changed it up. He could, he could have decided everything was going to be black and white. So how boring would that be, huh? God's mercy and his grace are so overwhelming. When I look at different things, I took a picture of a, um, of a dragonfly, which is about that big. And it's amazing. I think, I think uh, God actually, don't think I'm too weird, but I actually believe that God sometimes allows some of these insects to sit still so that I can get that close-up picture. Because a lot of people say, how in the world did you get that picture? Because I have to take a bunch of them before I get a clear one. And the bug's that small, and I got his complete face. I can see the whiskers on his chin. He has a pug nose like a, like a pug dog. He has great big red eyes. But then I took a picture of another one. He had brown eyes. And another one had blue. Another one had green. Their bodies are different colors. Some of them have stripes. Some of them have dots. All of them are dragonflies. But God took the time to design each and every one of them differently, individually. I took a picture of a gecko yesterday. Amazing. He sat still, as, and the camera has to be that close, that close to get the picture. And he sat still, and I've got his eyes, and I can see the texture of his skin. It's incredible. This God that we serve. And if he took that much detail and time to create an insect that everybody that I know of normally walks past and never notices, if you were to say, what kind was that dragonfly that just flew past you? Most would never even know. But yet God, for his own pleasure, he gave this one blue eyes and this one green eyes and this one red eyes and this one brown eyes. And he did the same thing with his creation, us, his people. He loves us so much. Even when we fail, and we fail, and we fail, he's right there to pick us up. He said, I took my time giving you the texture of hair I wanted you to have, the shape of eyebrows I wanted you to have, the type of nose I wanted you to have, the color eyes, the size feet, everything God chose specifically and put that into your DNA to make you who you are for his pleasure. He loves you so much. It's just overwhelming how much God really loves us. We if we can't fathom it with our own brains, but if you would go out and just sit sometimes and watch God's creation in front of you and realize, wow, he has placed us so much higher than these things. How much more does he love us? So when you fall and Satan tries to condemn you and say, oh, you can't come back to Jesus this time, not this time, because you've done it one too many times. You're not worthy of God's love. You're not worthy of God's grace. You're not worthy of God's mercy. Jesus is ready to step and say, shut up, Satan. This one's mine. He asked forgiveness. I said he's not guilty. He's not guilty. So no matter what Satan says, it doesn't matter. Satan's a liar. If Satan's speaking to you, you can automatically say, okay, this is a lie. Right. Because Satan is a liar and there is no truth in him. Not, not, not even a tiny bit, none. He does not speak the truth. Even if it sounds like truth, it's cloaked in a lie, guaranteed. 
to know that if Satan is speaking to you and condemning you and saying, oh, you can't, you can't minister, you can't do anything for God, you can't. God said, you're not guilty. Thank you.